Uh, we hadn't played in 10 years, and it was the original five guys, and you know, the rehearsals, a lot of the stuff that you didn't like about the situation comes back right away, and then the things you really liked, there was a great chemistry with us. It's a brotherhood, it's a bunch of guys that grew up together. It was our first big record deals and bands and the songs. And it was a short thing, it was a benefit for VH1, Save the Music, for a school program for music instruments for kids in the New York schools, which we didn't have when we were kids. We got drunk on the street and tried to quit school. But, but uh, the event was nice, the crowd was really receptive and to be on a bill with like Perry Farrell and Slash and Joan Jett and Ian Hunter, Ronnie Spector, it was a really, a cool night and uh, being back where CBGB's was was kind of weird. It's a John Varvatos clothing store, but it was very rock and roll and he's kept it with a lot of love. But it was like, all right, we're back here. I'm back with these four other guys that I was part of this thing. We haven't done this in 10 years. It's not so bad. It was pretty easy actually getting into, it's a different head than when I play my stuff, which is not subdued, but more introspective, being in that gang and getting up with that kind of aggression in a different way but it was like an old comfortable uh, suit. It fit well and just, uh, it was easy to fall into, we had fun. And they kept a lot of the stuff in the CBGB's location in the John Vado store. Some of the ducts that had the air ventilation has all the flyers and muck on it. And, but anything that was gonna be there, people were gonna give it a hard time. CB's closed, there was time in between. John's somebody that supported rock and roll. If you go around New York City, he's got these bus ad campaigns with Cheap Trick and Iggy Pop and Ryan Adams and these cool black and white images. So he did it with a lot of love. And so there's still, you can't please everybody, but it was nice to be in there again where somebody's giving tribute to the history. It's not like they just mow over this and put this building up and you don't know what was there, like the Planet of the Apes. Like there's a piece of culture. If Seabees couldn't stay and be part of New York as a, you know, its legacy, at least there's something remaining where people can come and visit and get somewhat of a taste and I think there's some respect there so it wasn't totally weird but the the stage where we stood was in the same angle even though they brought in a stage and uh, with everything ripped out and all the stuff like CBGB is like a weird messed up old boat or something the way it was all put together with the carpentry here it was like this big clean box so it's like wow it's a lot bigger and uh, they took of course the great toilets the nastiest bathrooms in the world were, were missing so I felt a little mixed up I had to had to go in the sewer to get my sleeves. 